Okay, I am at the Herco showroom and I just wanted to show the VM1 and the VM10 and just kind of do a little bit of a comparison between the two. Um, so there's a few videos on YouTube and stuff like that. But I really just wanted to get these these two machines side by side and, and just go through some bits of you guys really. Um, maybe you're looking to buy one or maybe you've got a VM1 and you're looking at going into a VM10. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in that kind of thing, stick around and we'll just go and compare them. So before we continue, we'll get both of these machines on. So I'll just show you what that kind of looks like. So to power them on, there's just an isolator switch on the back of the machine. And you just simply pop that on and the machine will start booting up. Now, in regards to the footprint and that sort of thing, um, these two machines are practically identical. So both the VM1 and the VM10 have almost exactly the same size footprint, except it's actually pretty much unnoticeable. Um, the only difference really is obviously specs of the machine, power of the machine, and of course with the VM10, which is kind of our standard machine, which we seem to sell a lot of, uh, well, if you look at the Z height and things like the carousel, stuff like that, you'll see that there is quite a big difference between the two machines, yeah? Not a lot, but enough to make a difference. So the VM1 is actually kind of a, a shorter machine. And to be fair, really, the only reason you would go for a VM1 is if you had a height restriction somewhere. You know, say you were trying to get this into a garage something like that that's the only reason i would probably suggest going for a vm1 you've got less height you've obviously got less z travel but the y and the x travel are exactly the same as on the vm10 you've also got a little bit less power on the vm1 compared to the vm10 in regards to horsepower and torque and um the vm10 also has more tools so the price as well isn't isn't particularly massive between the two it's literally i think two or three thousand difference between each machine um here in the uk we're in pounds or gbp so it's, it's literally about two or three thousand so in dollars maybe four thousand ish dollars between the two but for what you get for the money you know you're talking like sort of uh what are we talking i think this is 16 tools on this machine off the top of my head here we go all the specs here um so yeah number of tools we've got 16 here 8000 rpm on the spindle 10 horsepower and then if we go over here and compare to the vm10 um again we've got um 10,000 rpm which is a little bit more a couple thousand more we've got an extra five horsepower which is uh significantly more you've also got 24 tools on this machine so also a lot more tools so you'll know if you're a machinist already how much of a difference having extra pockets in the machine for tooling can really save you time and help out um but yeah and for all that it's literally a couple of thousand pounds more so it really is worth going for the vm10 over the vm1 you know maybe you're thinking about trying to save some money um, realistically in the long run two or three thousand pounds is not a lot of money over the amount of years you're going to be having these machines so i'd suggest the vm1 really is literally just like a garage machine if you're struggling to to fit a machine into the space you want to get it into so now these machines are both on kind of babbling away here again they kind of power on like a normal herco all the same sort of stuff just get the light on just show you around inside the machine because I don't think too many people do that so I wanted to give you guys a real good look around. Um, we'll calibrate it as well and press cycle start to calibrate that and the X, Y and Z axis will just now move to home and calibrate. So on both of these machines the Y and the X uh, travels are exactly the same. It's just purely the Z that's changed. So let's move it on. Let's calibrate this one as well. 
we'll start moving home and we'll get the light on as well just so you guys can see let's just move that Power that on all right tool changes just calibrating on both these machines All right. Now, as for the VM10, you can get a fourth axis unit on here. You could even, if you wanted to, put a AB table, like a five axis unit on here if you wanted to. Although it would be extremely tight and I don't recommend it. But I have seen people put just a standard a axis or a fourth axis unit on there and they've managed you can get like a fourth axis unit on there and a small vice and that just about does it or you can get a couple of vices on here so there's plenty of space in this machine plenty of z height as well i'm not a particularly short guy by the way but there is plenty of z height in there it's not like an optical illusion or anything like that um when you compare that to something like the vm1 you'll see instantly let's just move that over we open the doors up here now just to say we have actually got this micro lock quick change table on here with all these little vices and stuff like that one so there is kind of an optical illusion going on here um, because already this has taken up quite a lot of your quite a lot of your z height so it does actually look a little bit smaller in there than it actually is um you can you can see the tool arm the head home position and all that kind of stuff sits a lot lower than it does on the vm10 yeah so if you've got those big jobs in there you know they're a little bit high or you've got to hold them onto like an angled plate or a weird fixture to try and get some holes in the side of it that kind of thing if you're job shopping then again the vm10 will be the one to go for although i would always go for it anyway like I say, unless you have some sort of weird height restriction um, and you just you just can't squeeze it in. Now, this does have a filter mist on top of it as well. There's no filter mist on that one. Um, that's purely because this one's running coolant and that one cuts our demos dry. Um, now, there's plenty of power on both these machines. This one cuts a stainless demo and a uh, mild steel demo. And to be fair, it ripped through the stainless steel absolutely lovely. The spindle doesn't stall or anything like that. Um, both of these machines, even the VM1, even though this is a smaller, less powerful machine, it is still a three-phase machine. So you'll still need three-phase to power it. Um, and if you don't and you're looking to stick it in a garage or something like that, then you'll need probably something like a rotary phase converter to convert it to three-phase to be able to run it. The VM10, let's talk about that a little bit more. Now, the VM10 over here, you can get with a few extra options like it. rotary A axis, you can get uh, through spindle cooling on it, all that sort of stuff. The VM1 you can't. So the VM1 again is more of a, a garage type machine. In regards to stuff like software options on these machines, you can you can get 3D surfacing and, and 3D mold and stuff like that on the VM10 and the VM1. You get all the same software options on here. You'll just find the hardware you'll struggle to get. Mainly you'll struggle to get any hardware in there really, like a fourth axis unit or a five axis table and stuff like that. So really, you know, a lot of your work has to be a bit flatter. Um, let's just compare those Zs quickly. So travels wise, we've got X660, Y406 and Z356 millimeters. So that's 356 millimeters of travel between your bed and the maximum height that that spindle can go. Now, don't forget as well, you're gonna have a tool in here as well. So if your tool's 100 or 150 millimeters long, then obviously in theory, that Z height drastically reduces. Over here, this is kind of where that machine shines a little bit more. You can have all your work kind of down here. Um, your tools, you can have a couple hundred mil tools and stuff like that, and it's, it's really not gonna be bothered or affected by it. You can get your tooler jobs in there. Now, looking at the travels, you've got 660 in the X, 406 again in the Y, 
here in the Z. We've got nearly a couple of hundred mil extra in the Z. So yeah, it really does kind of outshine the VM1. I'm not putting down the VM1, it's a good machine. Every machine has its has its place and it's you know has its place that it needs to be in. But if you are looking at both of these machines and you're considering either one of them and you've got the space to fit a VM10 in, you would be very, very silly not to go for a VM10. All right. So like I say, the VM1 is, I would only go for one if I was really struggling to fit it in some way. So let me just show you a quick look around. Sorry, they're a little, little bit dusty down here, but yeah, exactly the same footprint. It's just the Z height that changes the overall Z height of the machine and also the Z shipping height as well when they're sort of all crated up is slightly different. But apart from that, they're both really good, decent machines. You've got obviously uh, air blast on the spindle and coolant, air blast on the spindle and coolant in the VM1 as well. You've got a coolant gun and an air gun on both of these machines as well. Yeah, the VM10 you can get as a, you can actually get a VM10 Plus, um, which is kind of like uh, a step up. So the VM10 Plus um, will come with a bunch of extra little bits and pieces like this dual screen, for example, so that you don't have to flick between programming and the graphics on one screen like you have to on the VM1. So you can get the VM10 with a with a screen added on basically. It's a plus machine, so it comes with a few extra little bits and pieces just to make your life easier. So yeah, uh, let me know what you think. As you can see, the VM1 has a much smaller tool changer, or a carousel should I say, compared to the likes of the VM10. Yeah, so you can get a lot more tools in there. Now let's have a quick look inside these machines. Like I said, the X and the Y are both the same. On both travels on these machines are exactly the same. It's only the Z that changes. But I'll show you inside the machines anyway. On this one we run coolant, so there's actually a um, kind of like a chip auger, not a chip conveyor, but there's a screw in the bottom that runs along here and it just kind of pushes the swarf out into that little box there, container there. Now on the VM10, we actually don't really have any swarf management system on here, but again, you could get like a chip auger or conveyor um, you can actually get a proper conveyor that will slot into this machine and run out of here like that and drop the swarf into the bin. Kind of like what you would see on that machine there. Again, X and Y travels are the same, it's just the Z that changes. But yeah, if you don't have any kind of chip management system, then you'll be kind of brushing the chips and scooping them out of the bottom basically. Um, it's quite an easy machine to get into, to be fair. And I think also if uh, you made some kind of coolant system that would flush the chips down that maybe ran along the edges, then that would be the ideal scenario. Just flushes all the chips down to the bottom of the machine. Um, you do get a little bit of build up in the corners there every now and then, dependent on what you're cutting, if you're cutting a lot of aluminium and stuff like that. It's like any machine really, you've just got to keep on top of your swarf, don't let it build up too much. There's precautions you can take and put in place, like you could have extra coolant nozzles washing around in here, just keeping everything nice and clean and keeping the back clean, making sure it doesn't build up and jam anything. Um, you could also run a chip fan at the end of your cycle just to blow off the table, all that sort of stuff, just to get the swarf down in there really, to get it washed away and out of the machine. But that's exactly the same in any machine. You're always gonna have, depending on what materials you're cutting and how many parts you're making, some sort of swarf management issues. And that's something you guys gotta keep on top of yourself.
and if you guys have any questions pop it down into the comment section and I'll try and answer as best as I can.